So it's great to be back in Singapore. Um, and uh, first, let me congratulate Informatech uh, for keeping on arranging this uh, world-class event. So let's talk about something different. How about talking about 5G? Not just a joke. It's just a bad joke. Everybody's talking about 5G. Now even the comedy shows, they get it and they talk a lot about uh, 5G, which is really exciting to see. So uh, uh, basically what I wanted to talk about today is how 5G empowers you. You as a consumer, as a business, and as a country, looking to improve its economy and to put itself as a leader in the digital world map. So this is basically the purpose of any 5G application or deployment that we're all looking for. Specifically here in Asia, we have different flavor and different driving forces for 5G. I was thinking about that and I found there are maybe four different reasons in why 5G in Asia will be leading in the next couple of years. Number one is the largest scale, of course. So the massive, the, the number of people, the largest scale. Number two is the digital appetite. Number three, I think, I didn't touch it, I, I swear. Something, <laughs> I swear I don't touch it. <laughs> so please control uh, the slides. So again, number one is a massive scale. Number two is the digital appetite. Number three is the manufacturing focus and concentration in Asia. Number four, you have to add the geopolitical situation and also the ICT competition, uh, the ICT economy competition, Asia and the West, and this is very clear. So, but basically beyond all of that, I think what we need to focus on as a core vision for 5G is four things. We need to focus on the society, power for society, innovative technologies. We need to focus on industries digitalization. Last but not least, we need to focus on economy. So society, industry, technology, economy, that's our focus. So let's go on and I will not talk about the large amount of data that's being consumed and enhanced mobile broadband and all of those things. But I will capture the digital transformation journey of any business and in any country. Basically, it's all, number one, it's technology driven, and number two, it is business driven. And I'm not sure if I ask you to raise your hand if the digital transformation, if you think a digital transformation is technology driven, please raise your hand. Is digital transformation technology driven? Few hands. How about is it business driven? Oh, here you go. So a lot of people believe that digital transformation is business driven. Well, actually, they both act as gear and they both need to be tuned to move up when it comes to uh, digitalizing or, or transforming businesses. But when we talk about transformation, we cannot just talk about 5G. It's the basket of very transformative technologies that help that transformation led by 5G, cloud, AI, edge computing, and also IoT. So this is what will be the foundation to transform all digital industry. And that's the difference that 5G will offer, which is really different from 4G. So now let's move on to the next slide, which the clicker refused to work, but here you go. So how about, let's focus on manufacturing connectivity. Right now, most of the manufacturing industry connectivity is wireline, but look at this statistics. Uh, by year 2022, 27% of those is gonna be wireless. And that will be even half of the connectivity will be wireless by year 2026. Of course, 5G is at the heart of this. That's the importance of 5G in industry and digital, uh, digital businesses for B2B specifically. Beyond the 5G, we can talk about the adoption of AI for enterprises is very low right now. So that's why both 5G and AI, they help each other. 5G brings more application to AI and AI pushes the capability for 5G to digitalize industries. So moving on. So 
the rich experience and the adaptability of 5G key performance attributes make it or allows it to serve deeper broadband to consumers and home. What does it mean, deeper broadband? Deeper broadband. It's fast speed and the consistent speed. And the wide range of attributes also allow it to serve, to efficiently serve different industries as well. So that's why all of the operators now are gearing up for profitable 5G. So you can see that half 80% of the connected homes, for example, right now, is less than 100 megabit per second. Well, now it's a little bit acceptable, but in the future, maybe that will not be acceptable. Don't forget that there is about 1 billion homes that are not connected. And 5G and wireless also provide an opportunity there. Of course, for people, we have to, look, we have to talk about some luxurious things, about AR, VR, cloud gaming, and all of that things. Industries, I will talk a little bit in details about some applications for industries. So, CloudX-powered connectivity. I think 5G provide more uh, freedom to have most of the services up in the cloud, to the point that any application that you're doing right now locally in your hard drive or computer, or maybe you're doing uh, uh, some kind of, uh, of, compu uh, of, of computing service, you're doing it locally right now. But later, everything is going to be pushed to the cloud. Why? Because of the connectivity is so fast. The latency is low. So gaming, you don't have a console. Robots, you don't have to have huge storage and computing capability locally in the robot itself, so everything can be pushed to the cloud, and the robot price will be cheap. As a matter of fact, there are some people that are expecting that in 10 years or 12 years, the internet is not going to be the internet of smartphones. It's going to be the internet of robots. Why? Because maybe each house is going to have one. Maybe you're going to have somebody who is you walking just like you're walking your dog, you're walking your robots, and everything is going to be in the cloud. So, when we also talk about Cloud X, we have to mention the Cloud AR, VR, and, and those nice and cool applications. And on that, I wanted to congratulate, actually, Korea by adopting those nice uh, applications and, and attracting more than 2 million subscribers, 5G subscribers, in less than four months. So what they do, they have the nice application like Q Plus Idol uh, Live and also some kind of uh, professional sports where you can place yourself and you can rotate the screen and, and to be with your favorite player or your favorite uh, pop star. So that's about CloudX. Now, let's talk a little bit about some industrial applications. And I picked the few, actually, because as we know, there are so many of those. But basically, the barrier behind, to me at least, the barrier behind adopting any business application for 5G, it just you need to start it and work in a collaborative environment to make the business case. I am sure the business case will be different to start with, but it will work out. So one of the first applications that I like, which is uh, transforming broadcasting media industry. In the past, how many of you saw this truck when you have a sporting event or when you have a, a, a party or whatever? You see that truck and having the satellite broadcasting things and things that has to be worked out. It's expensive. This truck is expensive. How about um, changing or, tra or transforming that truck into just one person or two person carrying a backpack? each one of those having a 5G CPE, and they are going around with a 4K camera. Not only we will save money, as you will see here, but you'll also have more freedom. It's, it's the freedom and the beauty of being wireless. And, and, and that's by itself a key advantage. You will be efficient as well. Uh, you will pick you know, shots that you will never be able to pick it if you are you know, tied with a wire. So that's the media industry. And by the way, we tried that. I mean, Huawei tried that in, uh, in the Spring Festival in China. And also in the UK, we tried that by broadcasting some events uh, in Wembley Stadium. The second one I wanted to talk about, you know, you get it, which is smart uh, or 5G airport, 5G train station, 5G anything. 
So now, even, I, I, I'm happy always to hear that people now started to use a smart less and they are using 5G more. So they are talking about 5G airport, 5G train, 5G whatever. So this is Shanghai Air, uh, train station and, and basically when you go there you will see a lot of those robots. Not only do they provide some fun and entertainment and kind, I mean they can offer you drinks and information, but also they are equipped with a uh, security camera that can figure out, you know, if there are some people that are wanted or criminals or whatever. And those things, again, push to the cloud by AI, face recognition, and you can capture anyone that's needed. One of the really exciting applications is the 5G mine. You know, mining industry, it's a profitable industry for sure. However, there are many uh, challenges about mining industry. To me, the most challenging uh, thing about mining industry is the casualties. You know, a lot of people die. In China, I think it's more than 200 per year, which is really bad. How about automating things inside the mine by 5G? No matter whether it's a tele-operated uh, uh, vehicle that goes inside, that can capture places that you never can capture, even if you hire people. So not only save the life of the people, not only saving money, but also makes the business more efficient. So that's the 5G mine. Another one is the 5G port. So any kind of a port, if you add 5G there, no matter whether it's automating the crane or no matter whether you have tele-operating uh, driving I mean, vehicle, so this is very important. Instead of having a lot of people controlling the things, then you can have people in the cloud in a center to, to capture uh, those. So again, different application, even in the port, you can add 4K security cameras that can detect things more uh, efficiently, and also it can detect things more accurately as well. All right, what is needed for 5G? So, and why in Huawei we are the leader right now in 5G space, no matter infrastructure or even terminals? I think we have invested earlier, since 2009, and when the standard didn't even exist. We invested heavier, $4 billion until now in 10 years, and we invested deeper in everything, even in digital engineering as well. So we think that the three attributes, and that's back to Pamela's point when she said, huge and fast and complex. So that's why in our strategy, we believe in having powerful equipment, simple equipment, and efficient equipment. So powerful in order to feel the value for 5G, simple equipment to mitigate the complexity nature of having different technologies, and also fast, sorry, efficient, because basically, a lot of energy consumption, a lot of people need it. All of those things require adoption of AI in order to have better energy consumption, in order to have you know, operational efficiency, spectral efficiency, even integration efficiency. That's how you can see our equipment more like Lego blocks. When you put it on the side, you put things up you know, without the need of large things. So Spectrum is the lifeblood not only for the technology. I have three minutes left and I have two slides left. So Spectrum is important. And most of the Spectrum right now is C-band, which uh, C-band at 2.6 are the heart of 5G advancement in the world. Uh, the end of the day, at the end of the day, every hertz is or will be a 5G hertz. So this is the key for 5G and that's what we need to understand. So when you plan your spectrum from now on, even when you get the equipment or build your network, put that in mind and put that in the contract and put that in your strategy that you will move no matter what to 5G. And as I said, millimeter wave is important, but it cannot act by itself. And mid-band is as the golden band for 5G. Sub-3 gigahertz band is also good and it's attractive, and you can play it uh, dynamically shared. So my last slide is a little bit animated. I will get rid of the animation, and I will tell you how, from my perspective, to strategize 4G and 5G together. First, you need to strengthen your 4G. No mistake about it. Get rid of 2 and 3G. Put more people on the 4G layer. Strengthen that 4G layer. 
And when you are doing this, you have to modernize your site. You have to integrate all the, the equipment together and leave some space for 5G. Now, after that, you can think about adding new radio and serve more industries. Later, or parallel to that, you have to think about cloud AI edge computing because, again, putting 5G edge computing and cloud together, that will allow you to really transform your business. So if you have any question about the steps of doing this and how you can move things around, you can talk to me. I can get more uh, insight about that slide. So collaboration is the key for 5G. Without collaboration, 5G will not work. Collaboration between all of the players in the ecosystem, regulators need to collaborate, vendors, operator, digital industries, everybody need to think forward. And we need to think in an undistracted environment, as I said earlier, only thinking about how to move on. My, I will skip the status, Pamela already talked about the status. We have two-thirds of the live 5G network shipped more than 200,000 base stations until now. Things are so good, especially in Asia. But here are the 10 words I wanted to leave you with. When you think about the strategic path for 5G, please think about first the ecosystem or the environment. It has to be open, collaborative, inclusive, and secure. You have to be inclusive. When you think about solution, as I said earlier, it has to be powerful, simple, and efficient. Thinking about the platform, please adopt most of the technologies, cloud, AI, think about a standalone from now, and strategize your network accordingly. Finally, when you think about possibilities of 5G, please think beyond the consumer because 5G is really powered to serve all of the industries. And for that, I will leave you on that word and thank you so much and I'm here all day. Thank you.